answer. It says to you the um, satellite applications catapult. Would you care to ex right. quickly explain what that is, please, before you start? I certainly will, yes. yes. Um. Hey, can you hear me? Yes? Um, so this is going to look squashed because we have a widescreen template. And a oh, it's looking OK, actually. Let's try this. Oh, we're going to get away with it. OK. Um, so uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me along to speak. My name is Chris Brunskill. I work for a company called the Satellite Applications Catapult, some of which uh, some of you who uh, may have heard of um, uh, so far. Uh, it's a relatively new organization that was set up uh, by Innovate UK, formerly the Technology Strategy Board. Um, and it has a sort of fairly nebulous objective of driving growth in the space sector. Uh, it's part of a um, network of uh, catapult centers that have been established across the country. Um, and uh, the idea is that the government identified a number of um, high-tech industries with the potential for huge growth in the future, uh, and space was one of them, hence the satellite applications catapult. Um, the, the, it, it's a, it's a five-year program. We have get government grant funding to, uh, to sort of build up some steam, but the idea is that we have to um, demonstrate uh, where the, uh, the growth opportunities in the UK space market exist. And to do that, we also have to generate our own revenues, either through collaborative uh, research projects or through commercial uh, activities as well. So it's uh, analogous to the Fraunhofer uh, split, so three-thirds. Uh, uh, where uh, one third is the government and the other two thirds are generated by our own uh, technical activities. Um, the other thing I should uh, so highlight is the, uh, the emphasis on applications. Um, so the UK space industry, as again I'm sure you're all aware, has uh, uh, relied heavily on its commercial activities to, uh, to proceed and, and to, to progress to the point where it is today, which is actually something that is uh, uh, recognized and, and almost envied across the world as being um, uh, quite unreliant on the government funding aspects. We've never really had a UK space agency or uh, a national program up until a few years ago. Um, so uh, this is something that, that really underlies everything that the UK government wants to see, that we can generate uh, uh, funding and financing growth economically through our space activities. Uh, and this all leads into uh, something called the Space IGS, Innovation and Growth Strategy, um, which uh, has asked for or had set an objective to uh, achieve 10% uh, of the UK's, uh, sorry, of the global space uh, economy by 2030. Um, it'll be uh, 400 billion pounds um, in total globally by 2030. So we want 40 billion of that by then. So this is one element of the activities that has uh, been put in place to try and push that forwards. So that's all the boring stuff that we sort of do day to day. Um, my role at the Catapult is, uh, is actually on the upstream and, uh, and satellite platforms technologies. We're a small team, but it's recognized that it is uh, crucial to have upstream if you want downstream. So while all the activities are on the data uh, exploitation and processing, certain services on the ground, uh, I work in uh, the missions team with a few other people uh, where we look at advanced concepts, uh, new mission ideas, and the uh, uh, technologies that will enable them uh, in the future. And then my role is a technologies lead. Um, so what I want to talk to you about is actually something that started off as a relatively small project and has grown into uh, what hopefully will be uh, something a lot more exciting. Um, this is a, uh, a pocket cube kit. And in fact, the last time I spoke at the AMSAT conference was about pocket cubes. Uh, that's back in 2011. And perhaps it was a little bit too early for that kind of concept then. Uh, roll on a few years up until now. And we're starting to see a growing uh, community of people looking at how these platform or these, these, this concept of a small Pico satellite or nano satellite can uh, uh, enable new people to have access to space, and that's a really important part. That's an, uh, 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 objectives, I'm sure, uh, you can all uh, uh, understand. So, um, the whole con the whole concept is around running workshops. We want to uh, engage the community under the uh, the remit of the um, or under the mandate of the catapult. One of our objectives is to engage with. Uh, uh, both universities and the wider community to educate them on why space is important uh, and also to uh, identify where new uh, uh, entrepreneurs could emerge from. So this provides a, uh, uh, or will 
some of the activities we do is to try to demonstrate the potential for new technologies. Um, so we'll talk about the, the workshop a bit. Um, we've done a couple of prototypes uh, of, of our Pocket Cube concept as a kit of parts that people can use accessibly, uh, and I'll just wrap up with, with where we are uh, right now. Um, so what is the Nano Shop? The uh, Nanosat workshop. This is the concept that we've got at the Catapult. Um, we want to uh, uh, invite a, a group of people to uh, to Hilo and uh, where we're based to build a light curve real satellite over the course of a two-day workshop. Um, this is the fundamental uh, uh, objective. We want to demonstrate that the basic principles of a satellite are something that anybody can grasp hold of with a relatively technical background, um, and you can create it from a kit of parts and make it do something within a weekend, essentially. Um, so we're targeting students, amateurs, innovators, hackers, makers, even professionals, and so forth. Uh, and uh, sneak preview, it's going to be in September 2015, towards the end. Uh, next week, we should be announcing this uh, publicly on our website. So keep an eye on our Twitter and website for updates. Um, we're going to provide uh, a hardware kit for each team to use, the software that like, makes it run, and uh, some manuals and example code to get people of all levels up and running. So if you just want to learn how the thing works, we'll have a, a number of tutorial sessions or tutorial activities, um, but we also want to present it in a sort of a hackathon kind of way. So if you have your, if you have your own ideas, your own uh, experiments, or even payload concepts, whether it's a dirty web board or something nice and small integrated, you can plug that in and have a, have a hack at the, uh, the software that we've, we've got available. Um, and we provide guidance throughout the workshop to allow people to, uh, of all uh, levels, to get going. So why pocket cubes and why now? Um, well, again, I don't want to sort of preach to the converted. Um, Pixat was uh, launched last year, and that, that was uh, earlier this year, I forget. Um, and that was a great example of, of providing something like a satellite to the mass market. Um, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's quite an accessible concept, um, but perhaps a little bit too complex for somebody to really understand. I mean, it's just a piece of electronics as far as they're concerned. Um, they don't really necessarily appreciate uh, the, the, the fact that it acts as a satellite and it provides all the functionality of a satellite. We've got the other end, all over here we've got the big commercial satellite platforms. They're great, but they're incredibly complicated. And actually, the CubeSat platform now, 10 or 15 years into its lifetime, is a very mature piece of technology. And, and it's actually quite challenging as a, a layperson to come in and really get going and moving on a, uh, a CubeSat platform. And so they, they, they are based on sophisticated pieces of technology now. Um, so the Pocket Cube sort of fills that gap between the, the complexity of maturity and the complexity of something very, very new. Um, this is, it looks like a satellite, it's albeit a very small one, um, and it actually ties in quite well with a lot of the, uh, the growing communities around things like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and, uh, and then the radio activities as well. So that's where we, we came in with the Pocket Cube concept. Uh, and of course, um, Pocket Cubes have flown. Um, the, uh, the concept was announced a few, or was, was proposed a few years ago by, uh, by Bob Twiggs. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had these four uh, pocket cubes were, were launched on, um, uh, well, by proxy uh, on, on the uh, Unisat uh, uh, 5 platform. Um, and uh, they're relatively uh, sort, of, sort of varying levels of success. Uh, $50 sat, which we heard about last year, is a great example. Um, and uh, we, we draw a lot of inspiration from their, uh, their approach. And in fact, I would like to recognize them here and publicly. Thank you very much for sharing all of your designs, 50 Dolsat people, because uh, we draw a lot of inspiration from that in terms of how we approached a very, very simple, uh, approachable um, piece of technology uh, when we were considering how to design our own uh, Pocket Cube. Uh, and there's a growing community now of Pocket Cube developers. This didn't exist sort of four or five years ago when, we, when I first was looking at the, the concept. Um, but now, just a quick uh, search around the internet, no need to uh, go into the uh, Sorry Ears guys, but they're doing some really great stuff uh, on uh, Pocket Cube, so I'll come back to that. Uh, OzCube, this is a guy literally building a Pocket Cube in his shed in Australia and getting quite a lot of uh, very um, uh, positive feedback from the press. Albert Orbital run the Pocket Cube shop up in Glasgow, uh, and they are looking at providing uh, flight qualified parts and development kits for uh, uh, new missions based around Pocket Cubes. Old Robert is a great example of why this is a really, really good approach. This guy's a year 10 student who built a Pocket Cube uh, um, radio and on more computer as part of a student project. Um, I mean, that, that, that really captures what it is that we're <coughs> trying to show here. You can use this concept to reach out to uh, all facets of the um, of, uh, of, of the wider community. 
Uh, Wix Space is interesting. This is a, a new startup um, based up in uh, Manchester. And uh, he, he runs how to shoot balloon events, but he's also now reselling the Albert Orbital uh, Pocket Cube Shop kit. And uh, again, trying to sort of bridge that high altitude ballooning into, into pocket cubes. So, we went to Pocket Cube, we sort of understood that this was a, uh, a way forward. Um, so, how do you design the Pocket Cube workshop, uh, sorry, Pocket Cube and the workshop in six weeks? And the uh, answer is use interns. Um, one of them is at the back there, thank you very much, John, who uh, made this happen along with uh, another Surrey student. Um, now, this is quite important for those of you who are interested in uh, uh, helping out with um, uh, getting new people into the space uh, industry. Um, space Intern Network, SPIN, is an activity that's run out of Reading in collaboration with the Catapult. Um, we provide uh, internships across, or, we, or I say we, Reading coordinates internships across the space industry for um, university students. I think there's something like 500 applications this year. Uh, and, and looking at some of the CVs, there's some really high quality people coming through. Um, for uh, our uh, two spins from last year, uh, third year physics and engineering students, um, and importantly, no background in satellite engineering. Um, so in the first week, I sat them down and said, build me a satellite, you've got six weeks. Um, to which they said, okay, which is nice. Um, the, the sort of high objectives, we need a structure to hold it all together, the onboard computer and radio, uh, some kind of power system to allow us to have the solar charging battery. USB uh, uh, mixture, um, some kind of pay, uh, demo payload, and of course some solar panels to, uh, to, uh, to make it look like a proper satellite. Um, but because they're interns, I had no budget to do anything with this. Um, so we looked at using uh, as many open source and free tools as possible. Um, the slight exception is this is Solid Edge, but for students it's free to use, so that was nice. Um, but Google SketchUp, or, or just SketchUp I think it is now, is a great prototyping tool as well, a mechanical prototyping tool as well. It's not CAD as such, but at least it lets you get a sort of a, a tangible concept in, in, in software together. Uh, we would um, eventually decided on the Arduino platform for our uh, microcontroller, um, and then it's, uh, it's also a perfectly uh, acceptable and open source approach. Um, Eagle for all of the uh, PCB design, Notepad++ for some of the code editing, Git and GitHub for the, uh, the code repository and code sharing. Um, Essentially, it cost us nothing to, uh, to, to, to use the tools to, to build this. Again, importantly, what this means is that anybody else in the wider community can also get access to the same tools we use to develop it. So here is uh, the first mechanical prototype that we uh, pulled together. Um, we were considering sort of baseline idea, the one P, one unit, one U of, of pocket cubes, um, and also uh, two and a half P, which was a larger version that allowed us to uh, consider larger payloads. Um, we also wanted to uh, uh, make it a, a structure that allowed you to, as you build it, you see the satellite forming around it, so you have a solid base, or a, 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 a separate base, which you can then place your PCBs on top, put your side panels around, put your solar panels on, and you see the satellite form as you build it. So again, a very accessible, tangible, hands-on approach to, uh, to how we design and construct these uh, spacecraft. Um, we also have an electrical concept. It comes down to two very, uh, uh, well, maybe a little bit complicated on this diagram, but essentially we have a power board and we have an onboard computer and radio board. Um, they have a, uh, an I squared C bus that connects them all together, a power bus that drives it all, all to, uh, 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 drives the, uh, the various components. It's all based around an Arduino MCU. Uh, we have power supervisor, an RFM22 radio, uh, an IMU was on board as well, some external sensors uh, on a separate board. Uh, Parallax allowed us to use uh, USB for all of our uh, charging and data, so it allowed us to have a USB satellite, which is a really accessible uh, idea. Uh, some power management um, uh, electronics as well to allow us to charge the, uh, the battery from the solar panels, so and when you've not got it connected to USB, you can use it as a free-flying, as it were, uh, satellite. So this is the result, the concept at least. I've left my, uh, my model in, the, uh, in my bag, so I'll go and grab it in a second. Um, but careful, uh, sorry, the Pocket Cube Prototype 1. Uh, again, we have the 1P variant for the smaller teams to have their own sensor board to incorporate, so we can use just the, the ones that we can provide for that. And again, the larger version is uh, there for uh, people with larger uh, com um, uh, payload concepts. Um, Arduino IDE, you can download this for free. It's an Arduino Pro Micro that it's based around. I'll 
show that a bit more about that in a moment. Um, but uh, we provide a software library that we've written for Pocket Cube, the, the Pocket Cube, um, but it's all built into and baked into the uh, the Arduino environment. So again, if you've got any experience in Arduinos, and it's very very accessible and quick to pick up. Uh, and the workshop was something else that we needed to pull together. Um, so we get the the hardware and the the uh, the kit as a, a, a sort of a, a piece of um, equipment that's on the on the table. Also a breadboard version as well uh, to allow sort of multiple ideas to be tried at once. Um, we have the GitHub that uh, a Git repository that allows us to share all the code with uh, with the uh, with the teams. Um, I'll, we'll explain this in a second, but we also have a. Uh, uh, an instruction manual that, that, that really uh, allows, us peop allows people to get really hands-on with the, um, uh, the the construction side of it, um, and again, the sort of the guidance. So the idea is it's hand-on and an educational experience. Um, and the really interesting thing is, at the end of the day, uh, we want to do a tethered balloon flight, so we're literally going to fly our spacecraft. So coming back um, onto the manual, uh, it, it's, it's possibly le less relevant with the current iteration. But the earlier iteration has this quite sort of complicated arrangement of the uh, mechanical structure. So uh, we built a, an augmented reality app that uh, could be waved over our um, IKEA manual construction manual. Um, and it provided a 3D demonstration on your phone overlaid over the manual for the uh, assembly instructions. And again, this was a really good way of allowing people to understand exactly what it is they were trying to do. Um, like I say, now possibly less relevant because it's a lot more refined in its uh, mechanical um, implementation. But we're, we're still very interested in, understand in, in providing these sort of mechanisms that allow people that don't really have the sort of the, the, the inherent visualization with what comes from experience and show this is how everything sort of fits together. So here are our uh, structural proof of concept. The 1P and the 2.5P. Obviously the antenna here on top, a bit of RF, uh, uh, FL4, sorry, for the um, uh, mounting board. Uh, we even had them anodized in catapult red, which make them look very shiny. Um, and our electronics as well. So, um, again, just to come back to the fact this was an interim project, this was six weeks worth of work. Um, we managed to get the mechanical structures through before the end of that. Uh, the electronics came shortly after. Unfortunately, there's a slight delay. But within the space of a couple of months, we designed and built and, and manufactured an entire satellite. Um, EPS and battery uh, prototyping boards. So these have uh, some nominal sensors on board, but also a prototyping area as well. Uh, two and a half P and one P solar panels. Uh, a bus template, which allows um, just a, uh, an unpopulated board with a, uh, a map of the two buses. Uh, a camera uh, payload and host board, uh, and our uh, OBC uh, board, so there's the RFM22, that's a uh, Arduino Pro Micro, which is manufactured by Spot Fun in the US. Uh, interesting fact, they're actually controlled by uh, export controls, um, so we can buy them and import them into the UK, but we can't resell them out. Um, so actually you'll see, in a, uh, well, one of the things we're doing now is integrating that directly into our board, and hopefully that will get around uh, that challenge. Um, and also we have a breakout board, so this is a, a sort of a flat sat uh, or, um, adapter, if you like. Um, provides the two bus uh, pin headers, um, data and power, by the way. Uh, and then these large sort of D-sub connectors that allow you to connect together a, a, a string of different instruments or payload uh, components um, while providing direct access to the board for probing and testing and so forth. So that was last year. Um, we, uh, shortly after the, 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 the interns um, finished their placements, um, the catapult was visited by the, the British Embassy in Poland uh, and some of their uh, delegates. Um, they just launched or just uh, built a, a new space agency in, in Poland. Um, and we were talking to them about this, this project that we just finished, and they were very, very interested. Uh, so much so they invited us over to run the workshop uh, at the British Embassy in Warsaw um, in December. Uh, so this really kind of got us excited when we demonstrated that we'd done something that was meaningful and accessible and we really achieved our objectives here. Uh, and so I've got lots of photos of happy, smiley people. Um, they, uh, they spent about uh, a day and a half in the end uh, working on this project. Um, here's a group of them talking to the, uh, the British ambassador to Poland, um, building up all the different kits, running experiments. We've got some red boards, we've got some of the, uh, the, R the radio breakout boards. Um, I think there were... John, do you remember? Five teams, six teams, about 30 or 40 people there in total. Um, one of our biggest lessons learned from that was two or three 
of us. Supporting that was probably not quite enough. Um, and there's Lawrence as well, who was the other intern, who was, is he here? No, he was supposed to be here. Um, and the burnt satellites. So again, in the space of about 36 hours, and these people really were um, from a, a range of backgrounds. Uh, the, the material we sent over said, you know, you don't need to be an expert programmer, you don't really need any experience, you know, come along and we'll teach you along the way. So they sent us um, international development students, which was a challenge. Um, and uh, they didn't really get too far with the whole satellite building part, but they did really grasp onto this idea that you could use satellites for um, uh, new applications. So again, it's, it's a way of engaging people who would never have considered satellites or, spa or space as a, uh, a means to apply uh, new ideas on the ground, um, even though they didn't necessarily do the, the hands-on technical bit. Here's our uh, IKEA manual for how to build a pocket cube. Um, here's a slightly more creative approach to our uh, initial design. I think that's probably about three and a half P, which unfortunately we didn't have the, uh, the structure for. Um, and uh, again, overall, overall it, was a, it was a huge success. Uh, we even got them to do some presentations at the end. Uh, we sprung that on them because we realized it's probably a good idea. Um, but they, they really uh, uh, sort of got what we were trying to do and really engaged with the, uh, the objectives. Um, and then th they built satellites in, in the space of a couple of weeks. Um, and Poland was quite nice in December, if a bit cold. Okay. So introducing Uber, we, we, we went back after Christmas and said, um, this is great, we've kind of proved the concept, but what next? How do we make this into a real experience? Um, so Catapult's uh, interesting because we're, we're a mixture of technical people and business development people, and under the business and innovation, I should say, uh, and under the business innovation people, there's a design team. So looking at new ways we can build user experiences um, around uh, uh, the, the, the sort of concepts and the, the business ideas that we're trying to, um, to promote. So, we now have a fully on board. We've come up with this rather nice logo. Ubo is what we want to start to build a, a, a brand identity almost around with our kits, um, a, which allows us to, um, to, to promote this across uh, schools and universities and, and uh, sort of interested groups, hackerspaces and so forth. Um, and that provides us a central sort of focal point that allows us to start to build a community of users. Um, so we've, uh, we've, we've just got to the stage of um, starting to bring this together uh, and hopefully we'll have it all ready as the, uh, the kit and the materials that will um, support that for the September uh, event. Um, there's three key messages that we want to get across with this, uh, and again, it sort of brings together what I've been talking about for the past 20 minutes or so. The first is you build your own satellites. Um, the way you design them, there's no soldering. You can just put them together like a Lego kit or a Meccano kit. Uh, it's all based around those free software tools that we spoke about earlier. Um, and it provides you with a mechanism to design and develop your own instruments or payloads or missions. You've got a satellite on your bench, you've got a satellite on your desk, you've got a satellite in your bedroom. What can I do with it? Well, you can buy, buy any of the uh, uh, components or the um, uh, peripherals or accessories that are compatible with Arduino, etc., from places like SparkFun, um, and integrate those into your satellite. You can build your own mission. Um, it's a route to flight. Uh, like I say, we, we, we really sort of took a lot of the lessons learned from $50 sat. We know that the RFM22 is a good example of that. Uh, and, and other units have flown in space as well. So, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's, a, it's got flight heritage. Um, again, you can build your own experiment at home. Uh, flight in space, obviously, a little bit challenging, uh, although the Ardu Orbiter guy is trying to, uh, to raise some sponsorship to cover the 18,000 pounds or dollars, pounds, I think, uh, to fly his, his concept. Um, but this is where Reach of Space comes in, uh, flying up the high altitude balloon uh, is a really interesting concept because that allows us to provide it with some of the environmental uh, uh, sort of exposure you might expect, or at least different to the ground, um, and uh, communicate it with it remotely. Um, software and hardware experiments, of course, uh, are also integrated directly into that. And finally, coming back to this point of the community-driven uh, exercise, we want it to be something where people can rally around and support one another. Uh, we don't want them just to be isolated uh, activities. Um, so we're looking to have an online peer group, whether it's a forum or the uh, repository, um, that allows people to write their own experiments, contribute them back to the community, uh, suggest new ideas or fixes for the current and future kits, um, and uh, look at how we can uh, uh, integrate that into schools, universities, uh, training or even team building, I think it's a really good sort of idea for um, uh, sort of away day type activities. So just to wrap up, this is where we're at. Uh, the mechanical structure has evolved somewhat. We're now just down to a simple two-piece structure. This is just a piece of uh, uh, formed aluminium, uh, again anodized catapult red, 
uh, monocoque structure, if you will. Um, the PCBs mount at the base here. We have the USB port. Uh, the solar panels mount on each of the uh, the sides with a small access port for the uh, the, 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 the the loom, if you like. Um, and uh, again, this provides a very very simple basic uh, structure for people to uh, to engage with. Uh, we have evolved the hardware somewhat. Um, our antenna mounting board is uh, a, a PCB that also uh, forms the base of the structure. We have our four solar panels. Uh, incidentally, that's red because I wanted to make them red, and it turns out that Newbury charges 10 times as much for red solder as it is, um, as they do for the green, so uh, we stuck with green. Um, ABC, got the IMU, we've now got the SD card reader on there, uh, the radio's on the bottom, we have our uh, Pro Micro. Um, our UPS has the uh, interface for um, the, the four solar panels. We now have connectors on the base for each of those, rather than having to solder them to solder pads. Uh, battery port as well, uh, and we've merged the camera board down into the sensor board as well, so that we can have a, uh, a, a sort of an optional module, if you like, that connects the uh, the camera in. Otherwise, you can use that to develop your own experiments. And um, there's uh, you know there's a lot of opportunity here to be quite creative. What we can do with that. So, looking forward, and just to wrap up. Uh, we'll use these latest uh, prototypes in, uh, in Harwell in September. I think they're sitting on my desk right now. Um, but we still need to uh, finish up this idea of, of the kit, the experience. Um, the Arduino library is uh, in a sort of a, a beta stage at the moment, so we need to wrap up some of the work on that. Uh, and we're building the tutorials and manuals and the experience with our design team uh, right now. Um, you can get involved. Uh, if you um, check again on the website and Twitter, we'll have uh, a sign-up page for more info on Uro in general. Um, and uh, the workshop will be free and available again shortly. I haven't put links to stuff on there yet because, again, we're going to sort of do this as a, a programmatic thing uh, starting next week. But just as a heads up, uh, please do uh, keep an eye on the website and the Twitter feed and, uh, and get involved. Uh, if you want to run workshops or get access to the kit, come and speak to me. I'd be more than happy to uh, take your contact details, and once we're ready to start pushing this a bit more, then, uh, then we can follow up with that. And with that, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. So the question so is, and, and, and the sort of entry is if it is launchable, have you got an, an idea of you know, arranging for launch? Mm, so the, the question is, can we launch them? Um, in principle, yes. Uh, the, the sort of the idea of um, the Pocket Cube being an accessible piece of technology is that it uses stuff uh, that is affordable and survivable in space. Kind of orbits that you would target are probably those that are somewhat less benign than, than, than others, perhaps. Um, as, a, as I said before, obviously the access to space is, is really the biggest blocker. Um, we would like to launch one. Uh, the opportunities are quite limited. Um, the, uh, the only mechanism at the moment is the Unisat. People run by Gauss through Brazil out of Rome, whatever it is. Um, so, uh, yes, in principle, the parts have been demonstrated to work as, as sort of flight rated, if you like. Uh, we're not suggesting that people should fly them on, on, uh, on orbit, but it certainly should provide a very strong grounding to taking them forward to, uh, to being flight ready. Well, it, it, has it been vibration tested, for example? Or nope. no. no, no, no. Like I said, we're, we're, not, we're not looking to provide flight quality or flight no, rated equipment. Um, okay. But, you know, if it works, it works, yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> How are you? Oh. Go ahead. Uh, red is because it looks cool. It can well, yeah, be. But I mean, in space, there are things have to be utilitarian. I mean, what's the temperature going to be in space? Is well, it's so small that the you know the, th the temperature is going to be what the temperature is. I mean, it's quite hard to have any kind. And even with a cubesat, it's hard to have any kind of um, uh, meaningful thermal control, right? Well, you can cool your outside surfaces. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, like I said, I should iterate, we're not trying to provide flight hardware here. Um, yeah, it, it's, you could, but then you, you, you 
yes, you would be going beyond the sort of idea of what these things are, uh, are, are, are trying, trying to, to do. Whether you really intended to be biased or, or, or whether it's just a random vote. Uh, uh, this is not a, a flight part. That's no, the uh, that's the balloon, for a balloon certainly yeah. yes. Um, but but for, for space, I'd love to see what happens if we launch yeah, one. And then we'd right. probably do some right. sort of basic thermal analysis and, and just check what sort of predicted temperatures might be. Um, but again, even with CubeSats, it, it's very rare to see any kind of uh, thermal management beyond perhaps you know, a bit of set of set of mirroring, maybe. Okay. You didn't say why you chose uh, it doesn't stand for anything. It's actually a, a truncation of Cubo, which is based sort of a play on Cube. Um, we went through a number of different iterations. Uh, Cubos was actually quite popular for a while, um, but it turns out there's already a group, I think, out of the US that are building uh, an open source CubeSat operating system called Cubos. So uh, felt that was a little bit too close to the bone and, uh, and went elsewhere. Um, and this is what the design team does. We, uh, we, we plan on the ideas. It's literally up on the whiteboard walls, throwing this stuff around playing with the idea, and actually that, that dropped out almost accidentally. We sort of saw it as a, a subset of Cubo, and, and then there was what, we, what I like is the fact that, uh, you bear with me, sorry. If I can go back up. There we go. So uh, the B is deliberately supposed to look a bit like the side profile. This is supposed to look a bit like our, uh, our sort of outer structure, if you like, and that's sort of the cube looking down. So, you know, there is, there is a bit of a play on the design and the idea, but, you know, this is the sort of thing they're paid to do, so. I think we have to call that a bit now. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.